in this lesson we're going to complete our work on this LBO model by factoring in the final remaining item here, which is the net interest income and expense that we've calculated on our debt and interest schedules. And remember that the problem here, if we go back up to the top, is that for the income statement, we cannot fill in anything for interest income or expense at the time because we have to calculate this separately. We had to look at how the debt balances were changing over time. And so we couldn't actually finish this. But now that we've actually gone through and completed our debt schedules, seen how the debt balances change over time, and seen what kind of interest expense we owe on debt, we can go in and fill out what we owe for interest income or expense each year. Now, oftentimes in more complex LBO models, there's more to linking together the statements than this. But in this case, if you look through everything we've done, everything here is pretty much linked together. Our cash flow statement shows how we're paying off debt, how much cash is available to repay debt each year, and how our cash balance ends up changing each year. So that's all there. We have how our debt balances change from year to year on our schedules right here. And the income statement, of course, is not being linked or pulled in directly from anywhere else. So that's all fine. If we had a balance sheet here, we would have a more complex task in front of us. But for our purposes, really, all we have to do is link in the interest income and expense from the bottom. One thing you should do before we do this is go to Alt-T-O in Excel. I have 2007 open here. It'll look different depending on which version you're using. But go to Formulas. This might be a tab in earlier versions, like 2003. Go to Formulas or Calculations that might be labeled in other versions of Excel. And make sure that you have Enable Iterative Calculations checked. Workbook Calculations should be set to Automatic. You can say automatic except for data tables as well if you want to speed up calculations. But make sure you have enable iterative calculations checked, set iterations to 100 with a maximum change of 0 0.001. The reason this is important is because by linking in our interest income or expense right here, we now have a circular reference on our hands in this model. To explain why, let's first link in the numbers. So for interest income or expense, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of our debt schedules right here. So we have around negative 8 billion here. And now I will just copy this across with Alt ESF. And so now everything is linked in properly. Now to see why this creates a circular reference, well, if you think about it, the interest income or expense, this depends on how much debt we're paying off or taking on each year how much interest we're earning on cash each year. But if you think about these numbers, the amount of cash we have and the amount of debt we have, well, this is going to be impacted by how much interest income we're earning or how much interest expense we're paying each year. So if we're paying more in interest expense, we're going to have less cash. We're going to be able to pay off less debt. If we have more in interest income, we can pay off more debt. We can earn more cash. So we have an inherently circular situation here, which is why in Excel, you have to tell it to enable iterative calculations and to actually go through several iterations of this or 100 iterations of this to actually calculate the numbers. So that's the final step in our LBO model. And with that done, with that in place, really the last remaining task here is to calculate the return, to look at some sensitivities around this model, and then to go through some possible interview questions you can get on this topic. But with that in place, that completes the three statement, or in this case, the two statement model part of our LBO analysis right here. Coming up in the next lesson, we're going to be calculating the return in this leverage buyout. So we'll be seeing what the private equity firm who purchased Apple here for, what kind of return they could actually expect on their investment over a five-year period.